So here's the thing. Programming isn't just about choosing a language or learning syntax. It's about choosing how you think. Think, Mark! And that's where programming paradigms come in. They're not just styles, they're mental models, frameworks for turning thoughts into code. Most people only ever touch one or two, which is like learning to cook and only ever making pasta. So in this video, we're diving into the iceberg of programming paradigms, from the stuff you hear about on day one to the stuff that feels like decoding an alien language. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to become a fellow codehead. All right, back to the video. Let's start with object-oriented programming, OOP. This is the part of the iceberg that's basically floating above the waterline with a neon sign that says, learn me first. It's the most mainstream approach by far, used in everything from enterprise Java apps to Python side projects. The idea is simple. Model everything as an object. Each object has its own data and behaviors, like a real-world thing. A car has a speed, a color, and methods like accelerate or brake. It sounds elegant until you end up with classes like Abstract Singleton Car Factory Manager and you have no idea where your program actually starts. Inheritance chains get deep, your objects start mutating state in unpredictable ways, and eventually you're debugging by reading stack traces that look like Shakespearean tragedy. But despite its flaws, OOP is still useful. It helps organize complex systems and make sense to our object-obsessed brains. Just maybe don't go full design pattern mode on your to-do app. Just below that shiny surface is functional programming, FP. This is where things start to feel smarter, but also more frustrating. FP is about pure functions, immutability, and no side effects. If OOP is about things, FP is about actions, small, deterministic ones. Instead of changing data, you transform it. Instead of loops, you map, reduce, and filter like you're in a BuzzFeed article about higher order functions. Languages like Haskell and Elixir are built around FP, but you'll also see it creeping into JavaScript, Python, even C Sharp. The real kicker? Functional code tends to be more testable and predictable, but you'll need to get comfortable with recursion, lambda expressions, and feeling dumb while staring at a reduce function for two hours. Oh, and everything's immutable. So if you like changing variables, forget it. FP devs don't mutate, they transform. Now if we go a little deeper, we hit procedural programming, the OG. This is the stuff our grandparents were writing in C, BASIC, and Pascal. It's linear, it's direct, it's top-down. No classes, no closures, just a list of instructions. It's like giving the computer a recipe. First do this, then that, then loop here, then return. It's dead simple, which makes it great for beginners, and terrible for scaling large apps. But make no mistake. Mark! Look, I made a mistake. A mistake? Yes. Every programmer has written procedural code, even if they didn't know the name for it. And honestly, for a lot of things, it works just fine. Not every problem needs polymorphic abstractions and event-driven messaging. Sometimes you just want to get from point A to B without turning your brain into spaghetti. Okay, now we're sliding under the ice and into logic programming. This is where things start to feel a little academic. Logic programming flips the whole model on its head. You don't write a series of steps. You define rules, facts, and relationships, and then let the engine figure out how to solve your problem. The most well-known language here is Prolog. You declare facts like Socrates is a man, and rules like all men are mortal. Then ask, is Socrates mortal? And the program answers. It's like programming meets philosophy. Instead of giving the computer instructions, you're giving it a worldview and letting it draw conclusions. It's powerful in niche domains like AI, natural language processing, and theorem proving, but rarely used in your average CRUD app. Still, the approach is mind-expanding. Logic programming isn't about coding, it's about truth. I want the truth! I want justice! I want... And now we descend into the depths, where the iceberg gets weird and cold and kind of terrifying. Welcome to concatenative programming. You've probably never heard of it unless you've had a very strange weekend on GitHub. This is the paradigm used by languages like Forth or Factor. The idea is shockingly minimalist. Everything is a function, and you compose them using a stack. No variables, no assignments, just a series of operations that manipulate the stack in sequence. It looks like alien math, but it's oddly elegant once you understand it. Think of it like programming in haikus. It's all about combining small, composable pieces and trusting the stack to carry context. Most people will never touch it, but it's worth knowing it exists because it challenges your assumptions about what programming even is. Speaking of challenges, if you want to challenge yourself and sharpen your coding skills and do that while winning amazing rewards, why don't you check out Code Crafters? 
I covered code crafters like a million times before, and now I have collaborated with them to give you code heads the chance to show off your coding skills and win amazing rewards. I am hosting the code heads community contest from June 24th to July 24th. You can join by simply using my link in the description and start solving challenges to earn points and the code head. With the most points at the end of the challenge duration gets to choose one of the following rewards on screen, so hurry up and start coding. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow code head.